Okay. We keep having technical difficulties. We're getting there. All right. Let's wait for the feed to catch up, and then we are good to go. I'd rather let, wait for it to mustard. <laughs> get it? <laughs> okay. Good. Let's get settled really quick. Okay. There's a couple What's things up, guys? I need to Waiting do. Waiting for that. What's up, Rochelle? What's up, Al Rochelle, Rochelle. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm ready to go. All right. What's up, Perilous? <laughs> What's up, T? What's up, Sammy? Okay. We ready? Yep. That's... Holy oh cow. Are we ready We're to go? We're not ready. No. Nope. You turned off the feed. You turned off everything. Okay, here we go. Why the tiger? What's up? It's pretty good. All right, check your mics again. Hello, check, check, check. Okay, good. Morning. good. Okay. Hey, remember, on if you're on us with Instagram, uh, request to join the feed, and you can talk to us and say, hey, what's up? And you can send in your questions and keep it clean. Okay. Ready All right. Go? Start the show. Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Marriage Radio. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, my friends? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and welcome today. Welcome to Marriage Morning slash AOM Radio, where we do four things. We pray, we share gratitude, we talk about intentions, and then we do some uh, questions from the app. So, mm -hmm. we got a good one today. Yes, and before we start, today's show is brought to you by Get Your Marriage On, the couples counseling app that's fast, fun, and never boring. Mm. We co-created it. Go that's check right. it out. GetYourMarriageOn.com. All right. Ready? Thank mm -hmm. you, God, for your blessings. Thank you for uh, covering us in, in grace, and I pray that you help us to extend grace to one another and to our kids and to ourselves. Also, I pray that you protect us spiritually and physically, and thank you for all your blessings. Amen. Amen. Okay, I am thankful for a couple of things. Yesterday, I came home from work, and you were outside picking stinger nettles. Now, most people may not know what a stinger nettle is, but it's this plant that grows in the Northwest, and you can make tea out of it, and you can eat it, and it has like a billion nutrients. more nutrients than kale or spinach or stuff like that. And uh, we picked some and ate it yesterday, and we cooked it, and it was super good. And you can also make tea out of it. And you were outside picking a bunch of it with our son, with our middle kid. And it was just like, oh, there's my family foraging in the woods. And Harvesting it was, stinger nettles. <laughs> right, right. And I was really <clears throat> thankful for that. And then I'll, also I was thankful for the letter that you wrote me last night because we had a thing going on last night, and we worked through it in real time, and it was good. So thank you for that. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for your response to the letter that I wrote. I think mm -hmm. it was really helpful and your willingness to have conversations. Although I think historically we would have gotten uncomfortable and gotten mad at each other and not known what to do. But I really, really deeply appreciate your willingness to work on things, mm -hmm. work through things mm -hmm. and work with me uh, to help make our family what we want it to become. I think that's amazing mm -hmm. and I'm thankful for that. So You're thank welcome. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> Thank intentions. You. Our intentions are to live live out what we talked about last night and this morning. To uh, what? Nah, what are you talking about? Don't talk for me. What is your intention for your relationship goal today? Not to, mine. Don't to, tell me what I'm doing. To live out what we talked about. To uh, intuit things, not too much because we don't want to assume things. But we, I want to anticipate what you're feeling and in hopes of supporting you in a good way. And then also ask you mm -hmm. what you're feeling. How can I help here? With whatever it is, and also extend as much grace as possible. So mm -hmm. that's my that's my intention. That's a good intention. Um, yeah. My intention is to, like I said, like I've said it every day, pretty much, mm -hmm. figure out how to make that transition from heart to, like, body, from from mm -hmm. actual. This is the thing I feel to now. This is the thing I do, and this is who I am. That to is very hard. It. Yeah, and I think. Listening to that interview with Marissa Peer mm -hmm. was really helpful to realize like, oh, I'm not actually manifesting and putting into action the things that are deeply in my heart and right. spirit about you and I. Right. And I want to start working on that more in intentionally mm -hmm. and purposefully. So that is my intention today to yeah. like manifest that. The love that I feel, the the gratitude that I feel, put it, make it actually into action. Yeah, yeah. Right. So Marissa Peer is a psychologist. I think she's from the UK. Yeah. And she was on the podcast uh, School of Greatness by Lewis Howes, which was, I used to listen to that all the time mm -hmm. when I was really starting into this growth mindset kind of 
get content all the time. It's a great show. The Lewis Howes podcast is really good, and he had her on there, and she is great. She's a hypnotherapist and a psychologist and all this stuff, and she does this thing called RTT, which I think it's called Relational Therapy no, it's Technique. No, Rapid Transitional oh, Therapy, geez, I think. I was way off. Relational Therapy is a whole different thing. <laughs> but anyway, she talks about the importance of words, and that I, I listened to it, and I sent it to Melanie, and it is so it's great. It's so important. So Marissa, we'll, I'll try here, to link it. P E E R. Go check that out. And this show isn't about uh, us so much. I mean, it is because we talk about our life. But I just wanted to briefly dive into something before we go on to our content mm -hmm. today. Uh, the show isn't about us, but I like to think that we uh, are are modeling things mm -hmm. just literally by talking what we're talking about, what we're going through yeah. last night and uh, yesterday. It, it's it's been it's been a stressful week with the kids at school and I mean the kids not at school mm -hmm, rather at and Melanie being home all day and she doesn't go anywhere like I I go to work and at least get out of the house for a couple hours but she's with the kids they're doing homeschool and Zoom calls and all this other craziness and a million emails and uh, it we 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 had an argument last night and I hurt her feelings she hurt my feelings and we didn't respond to it in the typical way that we do like you know just go to bed upset right not like <clears throat> screaming or anything like that but just kind of kind of miffed right and then we wake up Melanie writes me an email I read it it tells me what I do kind of wrong or whatever but it was co completely different this morning and she wrote it with a different heart and I read it with a different heart and we talked about it and I was like oh that's what you're thinking okay I, I I'm sorry I apologize for that and she did it too so it was it was a good mm -hmm. real-time modeling of, of conflict resolution of hearing one another and then being oh you know what <clears throat> geez this COVID stuff really sucks that we're home all the time and it, it's I'm gonna ask you to change your language we're safe at home all the time Marissa Peer. Marissa Peer, exactly. Marissa House, it doesn't suck, we're safe. We are safe at home, right? It doesn't suck. It's challenging. We're not stuck at home. It's, it's challenging. We are safe at home. Oh, guess what? We have a home. Oh my goodness, we're so thankful. We have running water, we have electricity, we have, you know, everything else. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, that's good. So it doesn't suck. Thank you for calling that out. And it's just a reframe of what you're thinking about mm -hmm. it. And, uh... I don't know what I was saying there, but I'm thankful. So, yeah. Well, yeah. we just, <clears throat> I think it's important that we process these things in real time and help mm -hmm. people walk through them in their own life as well. Mm -hmm. And we really encourage you to participate in, this show is participatory. We want you to pray together. We want mm -hmm. you to do your intentions and your gratitudes with your spouse because it changes your marriage. It mm -hmm. changes how you talk to one another, how you feel about each other. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I think this last night and this morning's conversations that we had were very helpful. We we both approached it with a kind heart, right. an open heart, a grace feel, a grace filled and sort of merciful heart. If that makes and it sounds really like mm -hmm. Christianese or whatever, but we gave it to each other a lot of space mm. and we're okay with one another in a different way than we had before. Right, and so. I'm excited about that. I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do want to dive into today's topic, right. which is I want better sex, but I don't want to talk about it. Mm. And yesterday we interviewed Dr. Tina Shermer Sellers live on our show. If you didn't catch that episode, I mm. highly recommend yeah. um, go back and listen to it. It was just posted yesterday and it was called uh, Reimagining uh, Sex and Intimacy with Dr. Tina Shermer mm -hmm. Sellers. And <clears throat> she is just phenomenal. She's an amazing teacher. And right now I am reading. Sex, God, and the Conservative Church, which is the book that she wrote. Mm -hmm. And it is so eye-opening. It is actually a book for school. What am I trying to it's say? For grad school students to... So it's a yeah. textbook. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't... It's it's like a normal book, but it's a textbook. What's up, Paul? So it's a little bit more expensive, but the value you get from it is worth it because she is a professor. It is a textbook. It's like going to school. Right. But in reading that book, it really has been so eye-opening because it's written from the perspective of conservative Christian, church people, mm -hmm. purity culture, uh, you know, signing those, what is it, the things that, church, like girls like would get a, purity a rings, ring and a, they thing. would make like a contract with their dad, and they would mm -hmm. go to a prom, and say they would never have sex with anybody till they got married, mm -hmm. and that is, Dr. Tina did a bunch of research about how that impacted people, because she had students in her classrooms, mm -hmm. who, a purity pledge, thank you, Paul. So people, <laughs> and a barf emoji. Uh, so people would sign purity <laughs> pledges and go to balls with their dads right. and like, it was this whole thing. And what Dr. Tina was finding was that these this culture of 
uh, conservative Christian, whatever, purity culture, was making people act as if they had been abused sexually mm -hmm. as adults. Mm -hmm. Like as if, as if they had been sexually abused as children and it was manifesting in their adult lives. And she was wow. like, what is going on? on mm -hmm. and all of the research is in her book it is a phenomenal book I'm literally only a few pages in as well which is crazy mm -hmm. but the reason that I'm bringing this up is that this has a lot to do with this conversation right now that we're talking about today mm -hmm. I want better sex but I don't want to talk about it right and we get emails like that all the time we get questions in our app the get your marriage on app has a question section and there are so many questions like I want better sex but I don't know how to ask my wife is gonna get so mad at me or I want mm -hmm. I don't want to tell my husband that I don't like this thing that he does because he'll get so ashamed and he'll mm -hmm. be whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's just so crazy. It's so hard to talk about. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, and we forgot to mention on the podcast, we're live on Instagram and Facebook right now. So you can, uh, so we'll be talking to guests, uh, who, people who are yeah. on the, the Instagram and Facebook, um, but you can join us every single day and we've got some comments. Somebody says this coming from someone that grew up and did it mm -hmm. right, air quotes. I wouldn't take it back, but man, did it do some damage. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I stepped on your cord. Ah! Oops, yeah, it's it is incredibly damaging it says when my dad found out I wasn't a virgin We literally fought and didn't talk for like three months. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah Listen it, to this. Okay, listen to this. I was reading this in her in dr. Tina's book this uh, last night I mean and it said the level the rate at which Christians versus non-Christians stay virgins mm -hmm. The difference is literally months. Yeah, so it's like there's all these purity pledges and mm -hmm. what happens is that Christian kids are not being taught about sexual sexuality at all. Mm -hmm. They're not being taught about um, STDs, contraceptives, mm -hmm. what like what is okay, what's what acceptable, healthy, what's like con consent. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're not being taught these things, and the difference of them becoming or becoming sexual active, sexually active is literally months. Mm -hmm. And then once they become sexually active, the rate of teen pregnancies is a, yeah. so much higher they're because they're not prepared. Because it's like, oh, I I already I already did it, so mm -hmm. let's just go whole hog kind of thing. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And uh, let's see. Agree. And then there's shame compounded on top of that because they're told that it's agree bad. with Paul. There has to be a different way to do it. There is a diff <laughs> There is a different way to do it, and that's what we're talking about. That's what we're uh, kind of uh, proposing. That doesn't cause damage. Uh, Rochelle says, "Yeah, let's talk about sex, baby." Just played in my head. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about. Every it. time that we that I say the word talk and sex, I think of that song. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's get to the, some of the, these questions here. Okay. I have to open my thing. Will you talk? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I don't know what to say. <laughs> okay. Question number one, right there. Do you want to read mm -hmm. that? I want better sex. No, you oh. that. <laughs> What's the best way I can open up a conversation about sex? Sometimes it can feel awkward to tell your spouse you want something done differently. How do we avoid the potential insult or embarrassment? Okay, well, again, the clearing structure is such a great tool, and virtually it's about anything. You can talk about anything and everything. And this, this is touchy because mm -hmm. I read that question and I think to myself, hmm, I would... Yeah, so let's actually, let's just go there. Because you mentioned okay. this the other day, unless you're uncomfortable with that. No, let's go there. I want to answer these questions okay. first. Uh, what's the name of Dr. Tina's book? It's called Sex, God, and the Conservative Church. And I'll you, put links up to it together. Yeah, you can go to her website, uh, Dr. Tina Shermer Sellers. Mm -hmm. And then also... It, well, in, on our nwioi.com, NW, Northwest Institute on in, Intimacy, nwioi.com. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody says the biggest issue to me is the attitude that's developed is that sex is impure uh -huh. because purity is equated with abstinence. God, work. Link, link, okay. Yeah, and equated with abstinence. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just like, uh, like um, uh, Dr. Corey Allen says. Oh, sex is dirty, sex is gross, it's the worst thing ever. Save it for someone you love. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that is a message that a lot of people got. And it doesn't make sense. It's like, it's almost like, oh, this great grilled steak is the worst. You should never do it. You know, but once you hit 18, you can go yeah. to any restaurant you want right. and it's the best thing ever. Right. And you're like, why have I been waiting for this so long? Um, oh, okay, sorry. so. And really quickly, Dr. Tina's book, there is a link on our Facebook page. Uh, there's an Amazon link. So mm -hmm. go there and get it because it helps us out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no okay. joke. So, yeah, let's talk about it. Okay, so the, re so the question is I want to, you know, I, want, I don't want to tell my spouse that I don't like what we're doing or mm -hmm. I wish we could do mm -hmm. something differently. I don't know how to approach that. Mm -hmm. Seth has mentioned that to me before in the past that mm -hmm. there are things that we are doing that he doesn't enjoy, mm -hmm. but he doesn't tell me what they are. Right. So 
I, I don't, this is obviously a little bit awkward, but I think it's important to have this, con <laughs> I know I also don't uh, care. Yeah. So let's have this conversation right. in a way that um, is helpful for people listening mm -hmm. to figure out how they can talk to their mm -hmm. spouse about it. But I do want to say before we even start, um, this idea, and this is a marketing idea from Russell Brunson of all people, mm -hmm. and it's the idea of a new opportunity versus what is wrong. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to saying, if Seth's gonna say, you know, I really hate it when you this, or it's not fun for me when you blah, mm -hmm. or I wish you would just do this different. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, instead of presenting like on a platter all the bad things about mm -hmm. it, how about we come up with like three or four or five ideas of new ways? It's a new opportunity. What mm -hmm. if we did this instead? Or mm -hmm. what if, have we thought about this instead? And in introducing that new opportunity in a really um, loving and good mm -hmm. light as opposed to these are the things we do bad. Right. Here's what we can do good, right? Yeah. Like it yeah. is a hard contrast there. Okay, so uh, yeah, you guys give us some likes or some encouragement because we're literally talking about <laughs> our sex lives in a responsible in healthy a responsible healthy way, way and also in attempts to help other people and open up these conversations so mm -hmm. throw it up there and sometimes i worry about if 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 something is super not super uncomfortable but uncomfortable or weird physically? or yeah physically then if i say oh you know that is not the greatest thing then that is going to get you out of the mood mm -hmm. and then it'll be just like okay it's like somebody throwing a, a bucket of water on oh, the whole bed yeah. and we just like stop <laughs> you know what I'm saying so it's like uh, which is Aaron is present what's up Aaron uh, you know what I'm saying so that that is one thing oh if I if I, if I it's like saying something unpleasant when we're on like a date and mm -hmm. things are going well you, you were know? just worried that it will kill the whole mood yeah that it'll it'll kill the vibe so you know that kind of I white knuckle and get through anything that's what I do, even. Y'all said sometimes. has to just white knuckle through. He's got to no, get no, through no. it. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I know. Like I actually am serious. Like, oh, that's not the greatest, or this doesn't, you know, feel the best, and it's just like almost. I have an idea. Waiting until. <laughs> bit my tongue. Waiting until the end. Well, that sounds awful. I'm sorry. I, well, yeah, I know, and that's it's like okay. Well, that's that's a th um. It shouldn't be that way, right? Hey, sis. Hey, girl. Our <laughs> eight-year-old just Get out of here. In. Scram. Um, I th what I think would be helpful, mm -hmm. not, not just now that we're talking about it, is there... So in our app, actually, mm -hmm. we have like a list. It's like our foreplay list and things like that. Why don't we just make that our... Uh, like our love-making list? Mm -hmm. And okay, girl, go. Okay, Hattie. No, go to your um, room go. right now. And we can have a literal, a literal list of the things that are unifying for both of us, mm -hmm. feel good to both of us, mm -hmm. connecting, pleasure, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then that way we know what we're working with. We're mm -hmm. not guessing. We're not, uh, like we've used that analogy with Dr. Tina, we're not just going to a restaurant and hoping we like the food. Mm -hmm. We're both saying, oh no, we want Italian or we want noodles or we want yeah. Vegemite. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ve gross. Don't we're, not, know. we're not Australians. Uh, <laughs> don't say gross. Some well, people I love it. I've never had it before, actually. So, how can we help this person? <laughs> it says, ah, the joy of live shoots with children. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> so, uh, answering this person's question, uh, I hear you saying, go, go use the app. And it, mm. it's not like we're trying to promote the app. Go use a pen and paper and yeah. and write this stuff down to be intentional when you're in the moment. Well, not when you're in the moment, I guess. But right now, when you're in a good spot, thinking about this write it down and be intentional so you can go back and revisit and go, okay, what was I thinking there? And then uh, <clears throat> oftentimes with us, if we write things down or send ourselves an email or a note or send each other an email, we're really able to have a different sense of clarity around uh -huh. it. And it's not just <clears throat> talking, uh -huh. right? So there's a lot, there's a lot to be said about that. Not a, not a, a heated email, mm -hmm. not a ugly email mm -hmm. meant to harm but like slowing down and being the most clear possible. Like don't write a seven page email, write a two paragraph email. Mm -hmm. that, will, that will literally like separate the wheat from the chaff. You are separating out the things that mm -hmm. aren't real. Maybe you rethink them. Maybe you go, oh, actually no, that's my, my problem, not his. Mm -hmm. And if you can really whittle it down to the things that are really important, an email can be very powerful, but not if you just word vomit as an email. Right. 
somebody says lists are as good as both are completely honest with what they put on that list even if it may be uncomfortable mm -hmm. in the subject yeah it is because just because something is uncomfortable like i'll i'll be honest two seconds ago i got uncomfortable talking about this i was like i uh, kind of like feel myself not wanting to talk about this right now mm. i don't know why but then i i went back to the idea of okay just because it's uncomfortable doesn't mean it's wrong uh, ask yourself wait a minute why are you feeling uncomfortable oh is it because it might be bringing up something here Okay, that doesn't mean it's wrong. Let's mm -hmm. just let's think about it and talk about it in that way. And that's one of the things that Dr. Tina actually talks about in Sex, God, and the Conservative Church is mm -hmm. that we have these shame stories. The church has built in a lot of shame around sexuality. I mean, so much so that even us talking about sexuality on a mm -hmm. podcast that is remotely Christian mm -hmm. feels like, well, people are going to hate it. People are going to like say, oh, this is terrible. You guys are awful. You're, you're whatever. That's mm -hmm. my shame story of fear and guilt around sexuality in the church. Mm -hmm. And so Dr. Tina talks about this idea that when your partner comes to you and says, you know, I want something different or something more and not in a bad way at all. Mm -hmm. There's a shame. It's almost like a, like a fire it flares up in you. And then all of a sudden you're burning people around you. Cause you're like, my shame has been triggered. You have touched something in me mm -hmm. that is injured and mm -hmm. scared and wounded. And now I'm going to lash then, out at then you. You're in fight mode. Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. It's like the nothingness and the never ending story. It just Ooh. kills everything. Yeah, yeah. But um, let's see, someone says, perhaps talk about preferences before sex, way before, so it's not so awkward. I don't know, guys, I hate sex now. <laughs> Wait, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no disrespect, but I love you guys. Yeah. You hate sex now. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so obviously that is something that's, uh, we're, I don't think we're supposed to hate that. Uh, no, thank you for sharing that. And here's what mm -hmm. I want to say. Read t Dr. Tina's book. Listen to Read Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. Read mm -hmm. Sex, God, and the Conservative Church by Dr. Tina Shermer Sellers. Listen to, go to, doc, go to tinashermersellers.com and watch her conversation that she had with Emily Nagoski. Mm -hmm. Those two authors had a conversation and it's amazing. It's a video. Um, but uh, I... I Sex is something really amazing, but I didn't think of it that way before. Mm -hmm. I was very much like you, like I hate it, don't want it, it's stupid, it's dumb. Mm -hmm. uh, it is literally a biological amazing part of our spirit and soul and it mm -hmm. feeds us and nourishes us, but not if we're having bad sex mm -hmm. and we don't know that we're having bad sex. So mm -hmm. I want to encourage you and I really am sorry that that's where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I did want to say about how to talk about having better sex, and again, I'm going to go back to Get Your Marriage On, we made this app as a tool that we wish we had had. And in this app, there are conversation starters around, it's the intimacy section of conversation starters mm -hmm. is all questions about sex and intimacy. Mm -hmm. And there, it's, it, the intention of that section of the app is to talk about sex and intimacy in a new way when you're not doing it. Right. And when people aren't upset, people aren't, well, all of the things, right? So go get the app and, and use the intimacy conversation starters. That's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. um, it says, does her book talk about overcoming and working through the shame and trauma of church? Yes, it does, that mm -hmm. the church has caused, yes. That's yes. basic, so this is a textbook written for therapists mm -hmm. who are working with clients who have sexual shame from church. Right. So yes, it talks about all of it. There are practices in it. I haven't read the entire book, but I think that it is, um, it, it, she even said it has like practices in it, things to mm -hmm. know, but Different yes. interventions and stuff like that. Again, go to yeah. Facebook, our Facebook page. It has a link to her book and I'll, I'll share it mm -hmm. again because it's, it, it helps us out when you buy it through our Amazon account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And we're, we're Hashtag not, real talk. we're, I think this, well, this conversation is a really good conversation and it's a starter. It's a, it's a, it's a, basically the first step into continuing to have this conversation. Even for us, like I, I think that we have a lot of stuff to talk about. We and, do. And the 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 darn number nine on the enneagram in me just puts everything down. And this goes, uh, and we've talked about this mm -hmm. sometimes. Like you you you've said yourself, like I don't have bad sex. Yeah. You know, for you, it's yeah. like you know, I think I do. Oh yeah, you know it sounds saying? like and you it's do. like I hate that. I, I don't. I hate that too. I don't. I don't actually know how to. And and it's not because I grew up with like super purity culture shaming stuff. So it's not. Un, I don't have to unlearn a lot of that like a lot of other folks do. So I haven't figured it out yet. I'm super well, hopeful that I will. And and it 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 takes is having those uncomfortable conversations. That's probably why I honestly feel. Kind of uncomfortable right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate you working through that discomfort. Mm -hmm. I, that is 
a good thing that you do. I think it's valiant of you. Mm. But one of the things I want to comment on is that how how old are you? How old am I? Yeah. Forty two. So it's taken you're have forty two years of experiencing intimacy in one particular way. It's right. gonna take a lot to undo that. Right? And mm -hmm. so I'm saying that for the person who commented and said I hate sex, like you have however old you are, you have that many years of experience behind you of understanding mm -hmm. it in one way, mm -hmm. knowing how to do sex and intimacy in a particular way mm -hmm. that hasn't been that beneficial for you, it's not, like, not like, by any fault of your own, but mm -hmm. re, reorienting yourself to that, re-understanding, um, and remembering, re putting back to your memory what mm -hmm. sex is meant to be for mm -hmm. you as an individual and as a spiritual person, as a as a whole person, a biological person, a, a social per like remembering, putting back together what that mm -hmm. is, it's going to take a while. Remember. Um, yeah. So like, I think mm -hmm. it, I think it's important to just know, have grace for yourself, give yourself time, give yourself mm -hmm. space. It's like to being at the that. same job for a really long time, and it's scary to leave or step out and go to a different job mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. because it's what we know, and sometimes the things, well, oftentimes, and this is how change works. Uh, things work for a certain amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be, oh, this really worked well for 30 years. Let's just look at the, the state of our, our nation and even world right now. Uh, with the pandemic, it caused us to look at a lot of things differently and go, oh, wait a minute. Some of these old ways of doing things don't, aren't, don't aren't, aren't working anymore. the best. Yeah. You know? I, mean, I mean, highlighted by uh, a lot of jobs right now Oh, we can work from home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and then is it going to go back to normal where you drive mm -hmm. and sit in an hour of traffic and then sit there and then come back when you can do a lot of stuff at home? So sometimes things work until they don't work anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's okay to unlearn those those shame narratives or mm -hmm. those those uh, certain cycles that don't serve us well anymore. Yeah. Um, the next question we have is, we've been married for over a dozen years now. We still leave, love each other quite a bit, but our sex life has become sort of flat. We still have sex, but it's no longer an exci the exciting thrill that it used to be. Is this normal? Mm -hmm. I'm also struggling with bringing this up with my wife. I, I want to add some variety into our sex life, but I'm terrified to bring up this topic. Have any of you run into this issue? Here it, or How is there a good and clean place to start? Mm -hmm. Did I read it right? Yeah. 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 So... Yeah, I, th I think these questions are exactly what we may be thinking, even. And how do you bring up these conversations? Like, yeah. so, okay, uh, pretend that this husband is. Okay, so just overlay my feelings with this husband's yeah, feelings, yes. and then what would you tell this husband? And I'm going to be listening so. Mm -hmm. I can do it. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Well, for sure, I want to say, number one, yes, this is totally normal. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is Dr. Corey Allen talks a lot about this on interviews that we've done with him. He has a podcast called Sexy Marriage Radio. Check it out. It's amazing. He's amazing. He's actually in our app. He's one mm -hmm. of the teachers inside of Get Your Marriage On. So if you want to learn from him, go get the app. But Dr. Corey talks about how our brains are wired to make ruts. Like that is mm -hmm. their job. It's calorie saving, it's energy saving for our brain to go, I do this the same way every time. That mm -hmm. way I don't have to think about it, right? That's why if you walk the same path, it will become a path and your brain doesn't want to go off that path because right. there's no sticks in the way, no st things you could stumble on. It's even on. hard to get out of that path because it's worn down. It might be, you know, mm -hmm. six inches deep and then you got to step out of it yeah. and that takes work. Yes, and so mm -hmm. like it, our brains are de are designed for efficiency and making a rut. Mm -hmm. But what happens is we are complex people and we don't want to be in a rut. You know, all of us mm -hmm. do that. We get in a rut with our diet or not exercising or how we parent or whatever mm -hmm. and then we go, "What? How did I get here?" Mm -hmm. It's you got there cuz your brain doesn't care if you're happy. Mm -hmm. Your brain cares if you're safe and have food mm. and sleep. Right. Oh, that's all it cares about. It does not care about your, if you're happy. But you, as a spirit and a soul, mm -hmm. care about if you're happy. So, so when I answer this guy, but I'm going to listen and then as the, listen so, back. Yeah. And right. so as I address this idea of, I don't want you to feel ashamed that you want to try something different. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I also do want to throw out there that trying something different does not mean trying something bad. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean trying something mean, dirty, inappropriate, yucky, like... Take that vocabulary out of there. Mm -hmm. um, you want to think of it as a menu, right? It's like, is it okay to eat something other than Cheerios? Mm -hmm. Of course it is. Have a steak. Have some lobster. Have some fondue. I don't know. I don't care. Do whatever. No big deal. Which one of those things is bad? None of them, right? They're just different. And so I want. I kind of want to encourage you there. Uh -huh. But again, I go back to this idea of a new opportunity. 
uh, you are saying you want a new opportunity. So is this husband. I want mm. a new way of connecting with my spouse. If I, even if I just say it that way, mm. it sounds way better than I want to try new things. Mm -hmm. I'm worried. Mm -hmm. I want a new way mm -hmm. to connect with my spouse. This is something we, you and I, have never done. What if we tried this mm -hmm. together because I want to connect with you more deeply. And I would encourage you, there are, actually we should have this in the app, but mm -hmm. there are conversation starters that ask you that. What is something you would like to try that we've never done? Mm -hmm. Talk about those things when you are not in bed. Mm -hmm. Talk about them when you are not in an intimate moment. Go out to a restaurant and talk about them at the table. I'm not I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. Get the app out, go to the intimacy question starters or conversation starters and talk about them when there is not even a chance that you will be getting intimate mm -hmm. sexually anytime soon. Mm -hmm. That will give you space to be able to talk about it without kind of the anxiety. It will give, um, like there's a social pressure to not get mad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, it's yeah. actually a forced function that's very helpful. Somebody says, be clear, concise, and to the point. It is a possibility that the other person that the other person may take offense when there is dissatisfaction in the rut. Mm -hmm. However, the honesty will be appreciated, and expectations and curiosity may be revealed mm -hmm. in both. Yeah. And I would say the one thing that people are most afraid of, I think, in this context, mm -hmm. and I just will say this because this is how I've felt in the past. We get this uh, comment often: is that if someone throws out an idea like, "Hey, I'd like to." I'm just going to throw out a random thing that you have mentioned before. How about uh, outside? How mm -hmm. about out in the woods? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people immediately go, well, where do you see that? Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of, if someone is really insecure, they go, wait, you came up with an idea. Mm -hmm. That means you saw it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then their shame, fear, anxiety, lack of trust, whatever it is, is, is triggered. And then they, then they get mad. Right, right. So I think that, I think that, so that probably for husbands is a big thing. Paul says, uh, get the app. Um, get out of the house and talk about it. Great advice. Not talking about it when in the moment only going to disappoint you and, and your partner. partner. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so I think that that's really, that's really cool that you brought that up. Like, oh, where did you see that? Mm -hmm. it, because, uh, because of our culture of like pornography and mm -hmm. all this other stuff, <clears throat> movies, magazines, anything, uh, Facebook ads, uh, everything, everything. It's like, <clears throat> oh. That's an idea, and like, okay, I didn't think of that, but that's an idea, and if I bring that back, or if this husband brings it back, you may be inclined, like you said, if if the other partner is self-conscious, does have low self-esteem, or that's been a thing, mm -hmm. then I am not going to bring up anything that may trigger that yeah. in you, because then mm -hmm. that's just a big fight. You, yeah, it's you, like a time bomb. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that is... That is uh, Personally, I think you hit the nail on the head, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, no, I'm not like seeing these things in like weird spots or anything. It's just like, you know, I mean, certainly you've seen something on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or who knows what that goes, oh, huh. Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking of what Emily Nagoski says, like um, uh, spontaneous <clears throat> arousal. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all been times when there, that's happened, right? Uh, that not like you're just like, oh, you know, got to got to go do something. But, oh, wait a minute. Huh. Mm -hmm. That seems like a, maybe a fun idea yeah. later. And it, it's kind of like when you see, think about this, if especially guys or uh, if you're watching a football game or if you're in the, in the morning on your morning commute, right, and you're listening to the radio, you were going to hear ads mm -hmm. for Wendy's. No, I'm serious. Yeah. For Wendy's, like or, or McDonald's, like a, a quarter pounder, because then that's going to subconsciously in your mm -hmm. uh, reticular activating system, mm -hmm. as Ed Milet talks about, it's going to go. Oh, okay, Wendy's, Wendy's, Wendy's. You hear Wendy's two times on the way to work, mm -hmm. 8:30 a.m. and then 9:50 a.m. or whatever, and then you're going to go. Oh man, you know what? Then 12 o'clock, one o'clock rolls around. I'm kind of hungry. Then you're thinking about. That you know that frosty. a frosty and a Wendy's burger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can see things like there's nothing wrong with a Wendy's ad, mm -hmm. right? And there's nothing wrong with a if a Target ad that has a swimsuit on it comes up on your Facebook. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, huh, wait a minute. You know, you're not thinking about swimsuit. Maybe you are. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But for guys, it's I'm different. always thinking about swimsuits. I love right. Swimsuits. You know, but like things that you're naturally attracted to, and uh, uh, no, not right now, buddy. Things that you're naturally attracted to that. That's okay, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I just think of like, okay, you're going down the aisle of Fred Meyer and you see, uh, you know, the brawny uh, paper towel man, paper towel man, right? And what did you buy me 
A flannel shirt? A, f a red flannel shirt. Am, am I going to take that as like, mm -hmm. oh, you're drooling over the brawny man? I don't look like him. I don't have blonde <laughs> Are hair. Are you drooling over the brawny I'm not, man? I'm not ripped, yeah. right? But it, He doesn't it's, have blonde hair. You do kind well, of I don't even know what <laughs> color hair he has. But it's something Brown. as simple and as uh, benign as that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So something about the brawny paper towel... You're like, oh, I like that look. Mm -hmm. Something in you found that attractive, right? And, okay, well, I'm your man, mm -hmm. so get a flannel shirt. Yeah, and I think... Does, does this make sense? Absolutely. Like, there's... there's um, Can I say something? Yes. So one of the things that Dr. Tina talks about in Sex, God, and the Conservative Church is this idea that uh, Christian culture has separated the biological side of sex mm -hmm. um, so much so that it all is bad. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Like any feelings, like the Joshua Harris book, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, mm -hmm. like he would say, oh, if you have it, you know, the, if you lust right. after a woman, which is, this is in the Bible, then you've cheated with her in your heart. Like mm -hmm. the Bible has taken that to a level that is so unhealthy. And right. then we internalize that. Which Joshua, then, uh, yeah, I, he, I've been talking to him on Instagram mm -hmm. and he agreed to come on the show, but I think he forgot and I'm trying to get him <laughs> back on the show. And I'm like, dude, we're not going to talk about we're whatever. Not gonna, yeah. We're going to like, where are you at now? Mm -hmm. How can this, how can you continue this conversation? So somebody says, any authors that address sex after menopause? My partner is great. So much happens around midlife that changes everything around sex. Maybe that can be a show. Mm -hmm. What a couple can expect yes. from menopause. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want to say too. So another, there's two things I want to address. Um, the first one is uh, you mentioned we mentioned this idea of like something triggering us to want to have a different type of sex or like explore something right we want to get out of a rut mm -hmm. and if you come up to me with an idea and I say hey have we ever thought about <clears throat> maybe in the woods or whatever mm -hmm. what if I got angry if Seth was like hey I saw a picture of shrimp scampi I'd like to try shrimp scampi mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, what? What? I've never cooked that before. I know. Where did you how get that dare idea? you? I don't, like, I don't know how to cook that. And yeah, I mean, blah, blah, I, blah. I want right. to try to get into your heads that not everything is malicious that has to do with sex and intimacy. And mm -hmm. I can say this from experience because I used to think that it was. If Seth would talk to me a certain way or say a certain thing, I'd be like, you, how dare you? You're right. looking at shrimp scampi. I, and it was so stupid and damaging, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to say that. The second thing I wanted to say is, even in relationship to the question about the guy saying, I want to you know, enhance our sex life, or I want it to be better, how do I talk to my wife about it? Mm -hmm. Dr. Tina Shermer Sellers talks about the idea of connection and pleasure all mm -hmm. the time. Not the idea about um, ejaculation or intercourse. Not the idea of you know, all the different acts of sex that you can do. Mm -hmm. The idea of connection and pleasure. Nothing else, mm -hmm. right? So if you even wanted to start your list of how, like your list we talked about, like um, things you want to try, mm -hmm. maybe we've scratched that. Mm -hmm. How about things that bring us connection and pleasure? Right. That is so different because it's us. Mm -hmm. It's connection and pleasure between us, not you and somebody else, mm -hmm. not the thing you saw over here or the thing that popped into your head. It's us. Mm -hmm. So it is what brings us connection and pleasure. And this goes right into the, like, the, even the menopause question. That's a whole different... That is a whole different ballgame when you're not talking about one way of having intimacy, mm -hmm. but you're saying connection and pleasure. Maybe it's shrimp scampi and scallions, and apparently seafood is the thing. I want um, seafood now. <laughs> maybe it's French toast and, right, right? Like, right. what brings you connection and pleasure? Have that conversation instead of what aren't we doing? What could we start? No. What brings you connection and pleasure? Mm -hmm. And... I have to know as a, I'm kind of a bossy, no, I, I'm bossy, I'm mm -hmm. a little bit forthright with things. Mm -hmm. I have to give Seth space to breathe and process. That's my responsibility mm -hmm. as that personality type. Give you more room than right. I, it's going to feel weird for me because I'm like, just say it, right? right. Just do Yeah. That's not how you work. Mm -hmm. And I, as his wife, need to respect that and mm -hmm. kind of invite the space for him to step into that mm -hmm. and talk about it lovingly 100%. without pushing back, without shaming, without questioning. Because if he's going to share his heart, I better be willing to share a space for his heart. Exactly. Exactly. There's nothing worse in a relationship than one partner coming up and maybe like having having thought about this. Okay, how can I say this the best way? I want to... I wanna, I want to change the situation and change it for the better, right? And really thinking about it and having a really sincere heart around that and then it falling on 
uh, someone who may be critical or is like, oh, like, why do you think that? Or this, this, mm-hmm. this. And you know, and that we like uh, Tina talked about yesterday in yesterday's show. Uh, we we all want to feel heard, connected, seen, loved, and I can't remember the last thing. Maybe it was protected in in some way. Mm-hmm. Like we all want to feel that in basically anything that we do. So who who else on earth it would be the best person to give that and be, uh, be able to um, receive that, mm-hmm. you know? So if you can, I, if you and I can, in everything that we do, make sure each other is seen, mm-hmm. heard, loved, uh, connected, mm-hmm. and protected, I just kind of made some of those up, then that will lend itself to a really deep, loving, mm-hmm. rewarding relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just said connected and protected, and that is really cool. Because oh, I think it's, it is really good. But one of the things I was thinking, the visual in my head when mm-hmm. you were saying that, was that for for many of us, for many, many, many of us, especially if we are Christians in the conservative evangelical church, um, we, mm-hmm. our um, understanding of sexuality is broken. Mm-hmm. What do you do with a broken bone? Our son broke his wrist this last summer mm-hmm. in half, both bones. Mm-hmm. So crazy. What do they do? They reset it. Is that painless? No, they had to give him like crazy medicine to to reset his bones so that he wouldn't scream his brain out and freak out. Mm-hmm. And then they had to wrap his arm in multiple layers of casts. Like cra- it was crazy. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. Um, so that's what we need when we are trying to have these conversations. We need protection, padding, grace, like kindness. Nothing can be addressed harshly. Like and right. when you have a broken bone, everything hurts. You sit in the car and drive down the road and hit a speed bump, it hurts. Right. You, someone bumps the table you're sitting on, it hurts. Mm-hmm. Everything is sensitive, everything is hard, it hurts, it's confusing, whatever. And we need to have the same, um, I, we need to have that mental picture. We have to treat it with the same respect and understanding and care and intention mm-hmm. around something like a broken bone. And we talk about unlearning stuff all the time. What's up, Miranda? Hey, you guys, if you like the show and it's helpful, please share. That is the absolute best thing that you can do. Hit us up with some hearts, too. That does something to the algorithm. (laughs) No, I'm serious about sharing. Share it with your friends. Share it with your whoever you think would benefit from it. If you just think it's fun, just share it. So we we need to wrap this up here. So, um, yeah, uh, treat this uh, like we we have to have intention around Mm -hmm. it. We have to unlearn some of the stuff that we grew up with because not not everything we grew up with was the greatest, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's felt or understand that at some point in their life. Oh, I didn't learn the best lesson there, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, we have to be brave and also be willing to be uncomfortable, right? I mean, uh, us personally, we have a a lot of things to talk about. Oh, that's good, right? And it might be uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. but anything uncomfortable is worth it later. Think about, we were talking about this morning. Think about if you're on the, you know, you got 500 feet left after running a marathon. You're not going to quit 500 feet, but that last 500 feet may be the toughest 500 feet. It's the 8th or 10th rep out of the set when you're working out that does the work. Oh, and why does it do the work? Because it's the hardest. That's where the growth happens. That's where the growth happens, right? So we want to encourage you guys 100%. And remember, Share the show. Uh, we have a workbook. Go to our website, anatomyofmarriage.com, to get the workbook. It was 25 bucks. It's $9.99 mm-hmm. right now. And, and shout out to Kenan you know, for helping us get our work website all reworked. Yeah. He's, you're doing awesome, Kenan. We Thanks, Kenan. So, all right. Anything else? No, just we thank you for having this conversation with us, for everyone who's been on Facebook and Instagram talking with us and sharing their perspective. Mm-hmm. I, I just want to encourage you. We need grace in these moments. We do have a broken understanding. Our culture has a broken understanding of sexuality and intimacy. Mm -hmm. So repairing it is going to take uh, time. It's going to take uh, padding and help and wisdom and knowledge. So get Dr. Tina's book. Go to our Facebook page. I will put the link up again. Um, But seriously, you guys are amazing. You're doing the hard work and you're... You help us tremendously. Yeah, for thank you. For sure. Uh, T says mad props to you guys today. Thanks, Tierney. This dance uh, is for you. <laughs> anyway, uh, have yeah. a lovely day. And right. uh, again, share the show and rate it and review it on iTunes if you're loving it. Yeah, just share so. the show. That's the biggest thing. All okay, right. love you guys. Bye. Bye.